It's been a week since journalists around the world began discussion of the so-called offshore scandal or the Panama Papers. And of course, in Ukraine, the biggest attention was drawn to the offshores of President Poroshenko. We now have with us a guest to discuss this aspect of the story. And joining us is Makar Pasenyuk. He is Managing Director of Investment Capital Ukraine, or ICU, who legally acts for Mr. Poroshenko's investments. Uh, thank you for coming to uh, this show. And um, we'll ask you not only to voice your opinion and to tell us about the chronology of, uh, of the timeline of the events, but also to listen and to watch to some of the uh, pieces that we prepared and maybe voice your comment after this. Okay, and um, I also will, uh, before we present the story, uh, there was a lot of discussion on um, with that, but we have Anna Babinets, who is a Hromatsky investigative reporter, who is uh, a, an author of this particular investigation on the uh, president um, offshores and the way he was uh, trying to sell his company. So Anna is with us and Anna, we've been uh, following a lot, a lot of discussion in foreign media, in Ukrainian media. But in the end of the week, what is the development? What you need to add and probably explain what is the main uh, thing about this investigation already a week after it has become a huge topic? Good evening, uh, first. And I think the, the most important is that Ukraine is uh, only one country which uh, didn't start any uh, official investigation. I think that it's very important because uh, a lot of journalists around the world uh, made very big work, you know, and uh, um, only Ukraine, it, this, it, this is only one country which don't have official investigation. And uh, I think that in every country which uh, head of um, head of country uh, was in in that list, in every country journalists are celebrating like their um, final of their result of their work. But in Ukraine, it's like like nothing. Anna, uh, are you going to publish anything more on the story, or have you exhausted the material that you have gathered? We will publish more during April uh, about Ukraine. It, it will be some continuous of our story of, of, pub, of stories which were published, and it will be new stories. And uh, by, well, uh, forgive me for intruding into your plans, but maybe you can tell us whether this is going to be, again, uh, about Roshan, or maybe this will touch upon other businesses of Mr. Poroshenko. <laughs> okay. I, can, I can't say, because it, okay. it, it will not be a surprise okay. for, for you, for us, and for Poroshenko. All right. Thank you very much. Anna Babinets, one of the authors of Investigation of Slitstvo Info, which is a structural unit of Hromatsky Television. And we now have with us Mr. Makar Pasenyuk, who is Managing Director of Investment Capital Ukraine. Anna Babinets said that... Good evening, <laughs> Andrei. Yeah. Anna Babinets said that Ukraine uh, seems to be the only country which has not launched an official investigation into allegations mm -hmm. of uh, fraud and embezzlement. Mm -hmm. um, how do you assess this? Why this is so? Is it the president's clout or is he... Well, uh, uh, in my opinion, there is nothing to investigate. Uh, uh, if we go uh, a little bit back to the history of, uh, of the investigation itself, or at least, uh, at least you know, the part that uh, uh, we were uh, aware of, um, uh, our response from uh, day one was uh, very transparent and uh, it was confirmed by Anna Skolik, who said that uh, even though uh, he... Uh, want to say uh, as far as that uh, uh, the naive uh, representatives of ICU provided uh, n not only uh, the name of uh, the company that uh, the inquiry was made, but also provided uh, 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 the names of two other um, um, legal entities uh, which uh, they were not asking about. So uh, uh, 
As far as uh, um, uh, the story goes, uh, in my opinion, there is nothing to investigate. Also, you know, I'm not uh, the general prosecutor or whoever is uh, supposed to be uh, launching investigations into cases like that. I'll explain why. Um, uh, what was uh, uh, published uh, in our statement uh, or in our response to, um, to Anna and subsequently is that uh, the companies were created for the purpose of uh, transferring president's uh, stake uh, into a blind trust, something that uh, has been um, uh, in discussions for uh, quite some time and uh, was announced by him uh, in January. Uh, subsequently, uh, last week, uh, after the last time we met, uh, Rothschild Trust uh, uh, officials have confirmed uh, to uh, a Reuters inquiry that uh, the trust uh, agreement was signed uh, on uh, January 14th. Uh, as far as uh, uh, the companies go, um, those companies um, uh, from uh, the day of inception um, were independently managed had no bank accounts and did not have any um, uh, operating activities. So uh, there is not much to investigate, in my opinion, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm not the one making the decisions. Uh, uh, am I right in understanding that Investment Capital Ukraine acts for Mr. Poroshenko's interests in the case of Russian company? Or yes, so are we, you... uh, we are jointly mandated with uh, um, Rothschild Investment Bank uh, to uh, uh, sell um, his share in the company. Uh, the mandate was given to us um, in uh, 2014 and subsequently uh, uh, was amended uh, to include the transfer uh, of, uh, the, of his stake into a trust. What about uh, Ukr, uh, Agro Prom, Ukr Prom Invest Agro, Leninska Kuznia and other businesses owned by or were controlled by Mr. Poroshenko? You're not dealing with them? No. Thank you. Um, and um, one of the part of the investigation um, it's, uh, you know, you claim that, um, you know, there is this blind trust, but with speaking with many journalists, with the lawyers, with everybody, we know that it's possible to sell a company without using any offshore. There is an opportunity in Ukraine because, I mean, you don't need mm -hmm. to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, in principle, the offshores is an idea that, uh, you know, somebody can live uh, with a different, um, according to the different uh, legal system. Mm -hmm. um, so, maybe if it's officially illegal, it's still a big political decision of mm -hmm. anybody who is running the country. So, what would be a comment on that before we also uh, listen to the different ideas of uh, are the well, experts uh, on that? Uh, absolutely. Uh, there are two different concepts, selling the company and transferring into a trust. Uh, 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 what we have uh, on our hands is uh, uh, due to inability to sell the company within a predefined period of time, which was uh, one year uh, in our mandate, uh, the decision was made to transfer that into a trust and then continue uh, uh, working on the sale of the company. Uh, I guess it answers your question. Uh, but uh, we'll bring to the uh, topic uh, the, our interview with Oliver Bullo, who is a well-known British journalist uh, who is exposing corruption in Russia, Ukraine, especially dealing with offshore tax havens, and that's what he said to us in regards of the whole Panama Papers and uh, the case of the President Poroshenko. Absolutely. And while we were watching Natalia Humaniuk's uh, interview with Oliver Bulov, a uh, British investigative journalist, Makar Pasenyuk, who is a managing director of Investment Capital Ukraine, took several notes. Absolutely. What? Yes. So well, what's your uh, comment? Uh, yeah. Uh, I, uh, I found the comment um, uh, a bit political. Um, in the sense that it talks about uh, rich Ukrainians, uh, rich Russians, uh, hiding identity. If we go back to our case, uh, then uh, the... Uh, Mr. President is a politician. Is, is, is a, okay, but uh, <laughs> so this is, is exactly political? why uh, you know, the, the company was registered in his own name. 
and not uh, in the name of uh, lawyers or you know other people, as uh, was suggested uh, um, many times by your colleagues as uh, the proper way of doing things, because uh, he wanted to be very transparent from uh, uh, in in the process uh, that he was doing. This is number one. Number two, uh, uh, I think uh, that. Uh, as the world is changing and um, uh, there are multilateral agreements on uh, exchange of information, uh, the, uh, and, and, and BVI is a party to these agreements, uh, uh, hiding, uh, hiding um, uh, profits uh, offshore is, uh, uh, is not really uh, what is um, uh, you know, the purpose uh, uh, of that. Uh, if we're talking about tax evasion, and uh, you know, uh, I think uh, this is what uh, the gentleman was referring to, then uh, uh, what needs to be done, and uh, you know, this legislation has been introduced in uh, in a lot of countries, is uh, is uh, is making sure that uh, Ukrainians uh, that uh, take their money uh, outside of uh, of the country, as uh, as they uh, you know should be able to do. Uh, because once you have paid the taxes, you know, nobody is to tell you where you should keep your money and what you should do with your money. Uh, I think uh, uh, to make sure, or the main thing that Ukraine needs to make sure is that all the taxes due to Ukraine are paid in Ukraine, and uh, this can be done through introducing the rule of foreign uh, uh, controlled companies as it exists in many um, uh, other uh, European uh, jurisdictions Bakar. and the states. Yes, absolutely. And, um, when the president of the country, a new elected president, after a couple of months yes. of being um, running it, yeah. um, sells and does his business via offshore. What this, sign what this signal to the foreign investment, for the foreign companies, for Ukrainian companies is? Well, you know, the if the president not, does yes, like that, absolutely. would uh, they act differently? What is the signal uh, means for you? Well, the president was not doing any business offshore, and this is uh, what I said uh, uh, and meant I'm when I said that uh, the companies had no bank accounts, had no operating activities, and were managed by an independent party. When I was listening to Oliver Bulov, and he said that, uh, to the effect that uh, it's all the sort of a plot of big guys against poor people, I remembered Alan Price and his song from Oh Lucky Man, where he says that poor people are poor people and they don't understand. The man's got to make whatever he wants and take it with their own hand. So smile while you're making it, laugh while you're taking it, even though you're faking it, nobody's going to know. And it seems that many Ukrainians are happy to go along with this maxim. This is at least what the correspondents of Hromatsky television found out when they vox popped Ukrainians. But um, before that, I just should um, add, before we see uh, hear what Ukrainian says, that uh, the documents which were leaked show that one of the offshores had accounts with the Raiffeisen Bank, so there is the, it there. But please, uh, let's listen to what the Ukrainian said on the scandal. Скажите, пожалуйста, знаете ли вы что-то про офшоры Порошенко? Ой, да, что-то мне парень рассказывал, что он козел. <laughs> ну, Порошенко, в смысле. <laughs> ну, типа, да, что во время Иловайского котла, этого всего ужасного, что он э, по-тихому деньги все скинул в Панаму там или куда-то. Ну, э, чуваки, у нас такой президент, уже пора было с этим при привыкнуть. У нас такая власть, и я ничему не удивлена абсолютно, правда. Офшоры Порошенко? Нет, не слышал. И вы тоже? И в новостях даже ничего такого не подходишь? Ребята, не все так просто, как она кажется. А как? Можете объяснить? В мире. А вы финансист? Ну, где-то так, примерно. Ага. Он просто проф непригодный политик, вот и все. А почему? Ну, потому что меланхолику, либо флегматику нельзя занимать, э, управлять державой. Это факт, который требует обязательного и публичного, в первую очередь, расследования. Конечно, это, ну, это без вариантов. Я тоже так думаю что надо людей все-таки за это наказывать. Уже вон в двух странах уже меры приняли срочно, быстро. Одного в отставку, а в Мальте уже разбираются.
So this is what uh, Ukrainians on the streets think about the matter. And although Makar Pasenyuk is in our studio, we give him an option to be part of our Vox Pop. What's your opinion? What's your take on all this story? Not as a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer. I'm um, an investment banker. Oh. Uh, as an investment moral, banker. Uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Well, uh, before I go into my, uh, uh, my personal opinion, uh, I would like to make a small correction. We've made, Natalia, you said that uh, one of the ac uh, companies had a bank account. We've made uh, several statements which uh, say that no bank accounts exist for those companies uh, that uh, were investigated by your colleague, Anna. I continue to insist on that. So for factual correctness, the companies had no bank accounts. This is uh, the first one. Uh, going back into my personal opinion, I think that uh, Ukraine is a free country. And uh, 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 I think that uh, as long as uh, Ukrainians uh, pay their taxes in Ukraine and the country benefits uh, from all the entrepreneurial activity and from the all entrepreneurial talent of people that live in this country, uh, the people should be free to do whatever they want with their money. And uh, it uh, goes as far as buying property in London, buying property in France, in the United States, uh, or buying shares of Apple, uh, Microsoft, uh, or uh, uh, even BVI companies. The only thing that Ukraine should care about and make sure is done is that Ukrainians pay their uh, share of taxes in Ukraine uh, for the profits that are made in Ukraine and uh, uh, as long as there are tax residents, uh, you know, they should obey that. Makar Pasenyuk, an investment banker from uh, Ukraine Capital Ukraine. I see you, investment I see capital you. Ukraine, yeah. yes. Investment capital Ukraine and uh, I was going to say let's agree to disagree because Ukraine is a free country, but I tend to agree with Mr. Posenyuk when, uh, when he says that Ukrainians are free to do with their money whatever they want. My only addition to this is if they have this money, which is not uh, the case with many, many Ukrainians. So uh, now we are wrapping up. Thanks for everybody for being with us and uh, thanks for Andre for joining and see you more often in this studio. I will also remind you that in order to read the investigation and the more others, go to our webpage ent.romatska.tv if you want to have more details uh, with all this data you, you have, with all these documents, um, there is something you can investigate. It's all very complex stories, so we try to keep them um, you know, simpler. I will also say goodbye uh, for you uh, at this stage and uh, to the end we also uh, present you a piece of the a short part of the investigation of the other investigation of the our investigative team uh, within the Panama Papers <coughs> project I'm sorry it's on the Russian citizenship of the uh, mayor of on Odessa the alleged Russian citizenship. alleged uh, Russian citizen uh, citizenship and with what with that we we'll leave you and I say you goodbye